This is Math 142, and we are going to work on Section 5.2, uh, Trig Functions of Real Numbers, and we're really going to develop the unit circle. Uh, last time we talked about kind of what the unit circle is and how to identify points on it, that sort of thing. Today what we're going to do is we're going to bring some uh, connections to it back to trig, back to the trigonometry that we've been working on. Our trig functions so far have been identified in terms of right triangles. So for example, sine of some angle, We've been thinking of it as opposite over hypotenuse, uh, where we have some, some right triangle. If that's theta, this is our opposite side here, and this is our hypotenuse. And, and the other thing that we've talked about is a couple of exact values that we know. So if we have um, a 45, 45, 90, and uh, I'll just make this a, a 1, We've talked about how this side is root 2 over 2 and this side is root 2 over 2. Now those sides are equal to each other. And again, um, we, can, we, can get that, we can get to that through a, through a proof that we've seen before. I'll talk to it in a second because I want to get the other one up here, the 30, 60, 90 as well. And in the 30, 60, 90, if, uh, if our hypotenuse is 1, the side that, that's opposite, the 30 is 1 half. And the side that's opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. And now one way to think about maybe remembering this is that the shortest side is going to be opposite the shortest angle, the smallest angle. Medium side, medium angle. Largest angle, largest side. They're just opposite each other. It's like they swing out more space. So this can get longer as the angle gets bigger. And root 1 over 2, uh, root 3 over 2, and 1, you could think of them as root 1 over 2, root 3 over 2, and root 4 over 2. See how that's 1. And so you can see how these get progressively larger as these get progressively larger as well. Now again, uh, just to think about why, if you're feeling comfortable about that, you can, you can just kind of skip this part ahead a little bit. Um, in the 45, 45, 90, if both these values are the same, and that's a 1, we can use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus a squared must equal 1 squared. So 2a squared is 1, divide by 2, a squared is 1 half. And now if you square the root that, you get a equals the square root of 1 half. We can square root the pieces in that fraction. So that would be square root of 1 over square root of 2. Square root of 1 is 1 over 2. So I get 1 over root 2, which is the same as root 2 over 2. Um, and the way that we can get there is, if, if I rationalize this denominator, I get that I get that radical out of the denominator. I can multiply by this version of one. Notice that's just a one. I'm just changing the the form of this. I'm not changing the content. I'm not changing the value. One times root two is root two. Root two times root two. Think of that as root four, which is two. So you can see that a must be root two over two. So all those sides are the same. So there's that, a uh, good way to, it's kind of nice to just do this a few times uh, so that this gets in your, this gets in your mind, this relationship. And then um, the 30, 60, 90, if I started with an equilateral triangle where they're all 60 and I make all these sides one, notice what I can do is I can drop a, a hypotenuse here, a height, and not a hypotenuse, sorry, drop an altitude here, a height. And when I do that, I, I've cut this in half, so this is now 30. So I'm just going to take this triangle and lift, lift out what I, had, I know so far. 60, 30, this is 1. This length got cut in half, so this must be my 1 half. Notice my 1 half is opposite the 30. And then again, I can use Pythagorean theorem. If I call this a, um, a squared plus 1 half squared must be 1 squared. So a squared, if I, uh, if I square that one half, I get one fourth. Subtract one fourth from both sides. And last time what we did is we, we talked about like kind of putting these in here. So for example, remember here's zero degrees right here. So if I put this 30 degrees in here, this triangle right here 
and that's 30 degrees. Notice that would be a rotation of, uh, of 30 degrees. And it gives me that point. Now that point has an x value and a y value. You know, I go over x, up y. And notice if I, if I do that, going over x, I'm going over root 3 over 2 and up 1 half. So on the unit circle, 30 degrees gives me this point of root 3 over 2, 1 half. Now here's how this helps me. Um, if I think of sine of 30 degrees, we've been thinking of the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now in the unit circle, the hypotenuse is 1. So basically anything over 1 is itself. So sine of 30 degrees, the opposite side is the y value, is the height. So it just must be 1 half. Or if I were to do, ask for cosine of 30 degrees, um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is just the x value, just, just the, the x part. And uh, <laughs> I need to undo that, sorry. And that would be um, x over 1. Like the, the hypotenuse is 1. The adjacent is just the x part. So it would be root 3 over 2. So here's what, uh, what's great. Now in this unit circle, I can start to think of sine just as height. It's just the y value. And I can start to think of cosine just as width. Cosine is the x value because it's a unit circle. The hypotenuse is always 1. So I'm going to get some new definitions here. So sine within the unit circle is just the y value. It's just the height. And similarly, cosine is just the x value, which is just the width, how far over it's gone. Now, this is, a, this is actually a big deal because one of the things that it helps me do now is it helps me get, I'm starting to break out of this triangle a little bit. So for example, um, if I had something that was here at a, at my rotation is 135 degrees. I want to find cosine and sine of 135 degrees. I'm looking for exact values right now. Like I could put that in my calculator and it would give me some approximation, but I'm, I'm looking for the exact value. So I know if I rotate 135 degrees in the unit circle, um, I'm going to end up about here. So how do either of these triangles help me do that? Well, let's see. I, I think 180 minus 45 is 135. So notice 180 is here. If I subtract off 45 from 135, I, I get basically the same piece. But now what I can do is I can take that 45, 45, 90 triangle and put it here, like this triangle right here. And so I know that this distance is root 2 over 2, and I know that this distance is root 2 over 2. Um, but here's, here's where I'm starting to kind of break out of the triangle. This distance, if I'm, if I'm graphing it in an, in an x-y coordinate system, this going backwards is actually negative. So notice I have a positive height and a negative width. So cosine of 135 that's going to correspond with the width with the x value, must be negative root 2 over 2. And sine, give me the height, is root 2 over 2. Right? That just hits that point, root 2 over 2. Uh, sorry, negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Now that's the basic idea in using this, this unit circle. So let me add in tangent. And with tangent, we're used to thinking of it as opposite over adjacent. But I think about the opposite of the angle, that's that height, that's that y. And if you think about the adjacent, that's that x. So tangent is just y over x, which is just the slope. Um, tangent is the slope function. So notice that if I were to go tangent of 135 degrees, in this, it's going, um, it's going down and over, right? So I could think of this as, uh, even if I went this way, back and up. So my, my sine value, my, my y value is root 2 over 2. 
my cosine value is negative root 2 over 2. And notice something to divide by itself is 1, negative 1. So the tangent of 135 degrees is negative 1. Its slope is negative 1, the slope of the line. So I can think of sine right now in the unit circle as height, cosine as width, and tangent as slope. And now these, um, these trig functions get some meaning just outside of right triangles. We're not just, we're not just bound within the right triangles. We actually have some, uh, have some meaning that has to do with position and direction, which is interesting. And now we can get these negative values for them too. Now to build up the unit circle, what we can do is we can, and it's going to get messy on here and, and don't, don't worry about getting it written down. I, I'll have a copy of it for you. And actually, if you did the homework from last time, you started to build your own unit circle in, uh, I think it was problems 21 and 22. I could be wrong about the numbers. But notice if I put the 30, 60, 90 in here, I get the root 3 over 2, 1 half. Or if I put, a, I put 30, 60, 90 in here, like this, or my 60 degree angles here, and my 30 degree angles here, notice that like, Opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. And I know that this is a mess right now. And opposite the 30 is 1 half. This would be the, be the point 1 half root 3 over 2. And we could put the 45, 45, 90 in here and get another point. And we start to get all these points around here. And if we do that one triangle at a time, just putting this in here, putting in the 30, putting in the 60, and so on, and going all the way around, we'll get what's called the unit circle. So let me erase a little bit and clean up, and then I'll show you what I mean. A unit circle, a complete unit circle, is right here. And uh, so here it is. Here's the whole thing. I do have a copy of it uh, that's printable for you, and I would suggest that you print it. So if we take a peek at, uh, at WAMAP, week one, we're in, we're in section 5.2. Um, right here unit circle handout right below this lecture that you're watching i do suggest that you print that out so you can uh, refer back to it because um, we're going to use it a lot so here it is here's this unit circle and let me point out a couple things about it so notice that it, it says here uh, 30 degrees which is the same as pi over six and it gives us the x value and the y value root three over two one half now that is that is that is just a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It gives me the X and Y values. But what I can do is I can, I can use this as kind of a, uh, a, a little lookup table. In other words, if I want to know the cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, cosine is width. Cosine is the X value. So it's root three over two. So what it does is it gives me some benchmark angles that I can use just, it's just to use kind of as a lookup table to get exact values. Now the unit circle has, infinite points on it like there's a 31 degrees on here there's a 14 degrees on here there's a it's a point that's on here but it, it doesn't readily give it doesn't like have this way where we can readily find these exact values we just have these kind of benchmarks that we can use later on the course we'll talk about ways of like taking half of 30 degrees and how do you find the the x and y value that associate with that so um a couple of things that i want you to notice about this uh, so first off let's talk about quadrants you know this is the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant everything's really a mirror of the first quadrant an image of it so for example if you take the first quadrant and reflect it this way what happens is um, all of those x values get negated right like negative root uh, positive root 3 over 2 but if I come up straight across negative root 3 over 2 and it's at the same height. So it has the same height, but the, and it has the same kind of magnitude of width, but the direction's different. Um, but if I know the first quadrant, I know all the rest of the quadrants because they're just reflections of them. So for example, this 30, 60, 90 triangle here, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle here as well, um, but it's just going in a different direction. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle here as well, but it's going down instead of up. So the Y value is negative and the X value is the same. Same width, same magnitude of height, but different direction. Now that 30, notice that that 30 degrees, it's a negative 30 degree rotation. 
It's the same as a 330 degree rotation. So this 330 is a 30, 60, 90, just aligned a different way. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about using this to find some values of some trig functions. So let's say I wanted to find sine of, of 3 pi over 4. I'm going to write a couple down here and then we'll find them. All right, and um, this would be where if I'm, I'm trying to find the exact value of these trig functions. Now, if I enter sine of 3 pi over 4 into my calculator, I'll get an answer. It might be equivalent to, uh, to something that's exact, but it might give me some decimal approximation. I want the exact value. And so I can do it on here. So sine of 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, that's 3 fourths of the way to pi. So pi is here. So it's here. Here's 3 pi over 4. And I want sine of that. Well, sine is the y value or the height. So at 3 pi over 4, there's a height of root 2 over 2. So this must be root 2 over 2. And you can do that on your calculator and see that you get this 0 0.70 blah, 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 which is, which is that. Uh, cosine of 225 degrees. So 225 is here. And I want cosine of that. Cosine is width or the x value. So cosine is uh, negative root 2 over 2. And notice that, again, that's just a 45, 45, 90, but it's going down. So, and, oh, and back. And since it's going back, my cosine value is negative. Uh, sine of 240, 240's here. Sine is height, or y, negative root 3 over 2. Again, you can see the 30, 60, 90 in there. Uh, cosine of 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is here. Cosine is width. Cosine is x. So it's negative 1 half. So this is just this great tool that we can use to uh, to look up values or to or to know values of these benchmark angles. And uh, earlier I talked a little bit about the symmetry in here. Um, you know how this is just reflected here, reflected here, reflected here. Um, if sine is height, sine is y. Notice they're all positive here. All my sine values are positive from zero to 180 degrees or from zero to pi. Cosine's width, width is positive in this direction. So cosine's positive through here. Notice all those x values are positive, but it, they're all negative in here. So you can kind of start to have this kind of sense of, uh, is it gonna be positive or negative? Uh, just depending on its value. So what if I wanted to find uh, the tangent of 120 degrees. So here's 120 degrees. Tangent is the slope, how steep it is. It's like rise over run. So I can think of it as y over x. So notice I have the root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Now there's a couple ways you can think about, about tangent here. Um, one of them is, you know, you're just dividing. This is just division. So it's root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. And when I divide by a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. 2's go negative root 3 over 1. Another way to think about it is the 1 halves cancel. Like this is a half and this is a half. And so it's just root 3 divided by negative 1. And that's true on all of these. When, when you go to get tangent, the halves are going to cancel. So if I want a tangent of 30 degrees, notice it's 1 half over root 3 over 2. The halves are going to cancel, leaving me 1 over root 3. And then from there, I have to rationalize that denominator root 3 over 3. So let's get a couple more definitions up here. If sine is, is equal to y, 
um, cosecant, remember it's the reciprocal of sine, so it's just 1 over y. If cosine is x, secant, the reciprocal of cosine is 1 over x, and cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent, is x over y. And we can still uh, figure out those uh, this way. So here's what's interesting, too. We can start to think about things like um, sine of 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees, etc. So if sine of 90 degrees, if sine is y, sine must be 1. And cosine, since it's width, or x is 0. At 90 degrees, I have a height of 1 and a width of 0. So notice then I have these extremes on the unit circle. Um, in other words, cosine, if cosine's x, it's out at 1. If As I go through these rotations, 0 degrees, get up to 90 degrees, notice that cosine's at 1. It's shrinking, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, uh, 1 half, 0, because it's width. And then it's growing negatively, negative 1 half, negative root 3, 2 over 2, negative root 3 over 2, negative 1. And it maxes out. And then as I keep increasing my angle from 180 to 270, negative root 3 over 2, negative blah, 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 down to 0. So cosine, I can tell it, its outputs have to be between negative 1 and 1. Inclusive, right? It can be those values. And same with sine. If sine is height, it starts at 0. As my angle increases, it gets up to 1. They come back down to 0. They go down to negative 1. They go back up to 0. So this actually picture actually even shows me sine will never get above 1 or below negative 1. And same with cosine. Never get above 1 and never get below negative 1. Um, if I think about tangent of these values, so tangent of 0 degrees, I meant that just to be a 0, 0 over 1 is 0. The slope is 0 there, right? It's a, it's a flat line. Um, but if I go try to go tangent of 90 degrees, how steep is that line? <laughs> It's infinitely steep, right? It can't get steeper. So we'll say it's it's undefined because we can't divide by zero. Tangent can grow without bound. Tangent, like, notice if I do like a line like this, that's really steep over a little bit up a lot. I can keep going and I can, tangent can get as big as I want. I can have a tangent spit out a thousand, right? Just over one up a thousand. It would just be super steep. It would be very close to 90 degrees. There's one other relationship I want to I want to point out on here. If I take any point on here, notice my my point that's on the unit circle. Since it's x y, I could also say it is cosine is x. So it's just basically cosine of whatever my angle is. I'll call it t sine of whatever my angle is and i know that that is one so this width again is cosine of the angle this height is sine of the angle and if i think about pythagorean theorem that means that cosine squared plus sine squared is one and this is called a Pythi pythagorean identity because it uses the pythagorean theorem and it's an identity Ident to t uh, equal to 1. So you'll notice that this whole unit circle thing depends on us having this um, hypotenuse of 1, right, where this is y and this is x. And so notice that what we could do is uh, we, we could expand this up a little bit. Like what if that radius wasn't 1? What if uh, What if it was 5 or something like that? Well, we, we could still talk about, you know, sine of the angle, and it would just be, it would still be opposite that y, but it would be scaled down by a factor of 5. So basically, we can take this idea and generalize it to, if the radius is, is r, sine is y over r, 
cosine is x over r and tangent is still uh, y over x. And then the same thing with these cosecant, secant, cotangent ones. Instead of that radius being 1, uh, here and here it would be, would be r. So cosecant r over y, secant's r over x. And cotangent would still be just x over x over y. Now I say that because of the next example I'm going to do. Let me erase a little bit. And let's say I told you that the, the cosine of a certain angle was 3 fifths. And I also know that t terminates in the fourth quadrant. And then it's find all six trig functions of, of this. So let me sketch what I, what I know. Um, I know that it ends in the fourth quadrant. So that's, that's down here. I also know that cosine is, is 3 over 5. So basically this width is 3 over 5. So I could think of this as, as this is a 1 and this is a 3 fifths. And then I could do some work on there to get there. That's going to be, um, that's going to be an okay way to do it. The other thing I could do is I could just say, you know, I don't have to fix this, um, this radius here to, uh, to a one. How about, um, since it's three over five, I make my radius five and my width three. And then I'm going to sketch this back down. Now I can kind of get the rest of the sides of this and find those, uh, those other trig functions for that. That was a terrible drawing. So is that. <laughs> I don't know if that's better. Um, so I have this 3 fifths. So let me figure out this missing side right here. I could use Pythagorean Theorem. 3 squared plus, I'll just call it B. So 3 squared plus B squared equals 5 squared. Subtract 9 from both sides. B is 4. So I know that the magnitude of this is 4. But notice it's going down. It told me it was in quadrant 4. So I have to keep track of that. This is actually a negative 4. That's why they had to tell me that this was in quadrant 4. If they just told me cosine was 3 fifths, notice it could be this right here, but it could also go this way. Like both these triangles, boy if I drew them the same because they're going to be mirror images of each other. If this distance here is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5, notice it could have gone up or it could have gone down. Cosine, there's two different angles that will give me 3 fifths. So um, it has to tell me it's in quadrant 4 so that I know which one to use. And then I have to keep really careful track of direction. It's really important that I do that. So now that I have that, Notice I'm not even finding the angle value. I'm just, uh, here's my triangle. So I, I, I know then, for example, sine of that angle would be opposite over hypotenuse or y over r, negative 4 fifths. Cosine was given to me, 3 fifths. Tangent, uh, y over x, negative 4 thirds. And then similarly, um, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, those are just reciprocals. It's nice. Once I have these, I can go, oh, that's just negative 5 fourths. Flip it over. Flip it over. Flip it over. Let's do another one like that. So I know that uh, sine t, sine of, of angle t is negative 3 tenths. I also know that it, this terminates in quadrant 3. So quadrant 3 is here, something like this. If sine is negative 3 tenths, you can think of sine as, as y over r. So sine's about the height, right? So I could say this is 1 and negative, and this is negative 3 tenths. But if I don't want to deal with the fractions, why don't I just say that this is negative 3 and this is 10? There's my angle t right there. I'm going to need this x value in order to... Uh, to find all the, my other six trig functions. The directions on this would be find all six trig functions. And I notice right away that x is going to be negative because it's going back. So hopefully I'll remember that after I do my Pythagorean theorem work. So I'll say x squared plus 
negative 3 squared equals 10 squared. x squared plus, now this is a positive 9. Be really careful with this. If you're doing this on your calculator, negative 3 squared, make sure you put the, the negative 3 in parentheses and the square outside of the parentheses. So you square the negative 3. If you do this on your calculator, it's going to tell you it's negative 9 because this only squares the 3 and then negates it. So we're here. Subtract 9. X squared equals 91. So that means X would be the square root of 91. Okay, square root of 91, and I have to think direction, so it's negative, it's going back. Well, I know sine of the angle is negative 3 tenths, that was given to me. I know that cosine of the angle, width, negative root 91 over 10. I know that tangent of the angle is the, is the slope, y over x. So notice it's negative 3 over negative root 91. And uh, I'm not going to leave that radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by this. Whoops. Negative by, by negative is positive. So that would be 3 root 91. I really want to write that as a 3. 91 over 91. And then as I go to do my other values, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're just reciprocals. So I can flip this, negative 10 thirds, flip this, uh, negative 10 over root 91. If I rationalize, that would be negative 10 root 91 over 91. And then uh, this one, I'll go back to this and flip this, root 91 over 3. And there they are. And notice I got those without even having to find the actual angle. I don't know the actual angle measure. And uh, that's okay. But I do know from the drawing it would be greater than 180, less than 270. All right. Uh, spend some time with that unit circle while you're doing your, uh, your homework, your assignment. Really, uh, really focus in on thinking about sine is height, cosine is width, and tangent is slope. Those are really key deep ideas um, that help expand what sine, cosine, and tangent mean. And can, we're breaking out of triangles now. We're starting to think about just points in space. Give me, uh, send me a message, any questions that you have, or post things in the forums. Good luck.